Do you know who's not good at keeping their promise? I'm not. You're not. None of us are because we're human. Even if we have the best intentions and we intend upon fulfilling our promises, there's always something that can stand in the way to keep us doing so. We promise we'll be there at a certain time. There's an accident that keeps us from being there. We get a flat tire. Something holds us up and we break our word. So as humans, we are not really that great at keeping our promises. But you know who is awesome at keeping promises? God. Hi, I'm Pete, and me and my wife, Shauna, are both ordained ministers with the Church of God. We believe the absolute best way to disciple your family is reading and studying the Word of God together every day and then simply discussing it. And that's what we do on social media, and we invite you to join into it with us. Today, we are on 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. The scripture says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some can slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. So if you remember the scripture from yesterday, you remember that he talked about why hasn't your God come, right? People were starting to scoff and say, it's been so long. Why hasn't he come yet? Well, here he says, you have to remember time with God is totally different. God doesn't work on a 24 hour clock like we do or a nine to five job. God is eternal. He is uh, as much in the past as he is in the future because he exists eternally. He is everywhere at once. So if time for him, it says one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. So he says, just because something hasn't happened in the time frame you think it should happen, doesn't mean it isn't going to happen. It just means that God is working on a different time scale than you are. And as believers, we have to realize the second part of this scripture, verse 9, says, God is not slack concerning his promises. You know what? We are slack concerning our promises. We mess up. We say we're going to do things and we don't do them all the time, not because we're being mean or we want to lie or we're trying to mislead someone, but because things stand in the way. But you know what the great thing about God is? Nothing stands in his way. Nothing keeps him from fulfilling his promises. When God says that he is going to do something, he will do it. We shared in our last video about Sean and I and, and being hard time having children and that God said, you're going to have children and he fulfilled that promise. Promise. But you know what? Even more than that, his word of God is full, full of promises for his people. And people look at this and say, you know what? How can I be loved by a God? And God's promises that he will love us. God's word says in the book of James that if we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. No matter what we've done, if we seek him out, he comes running towards us. We see in the story of the prodigal son that the father welcomes the son back who went away. So as believers and non-believers, we have to realize that God is full of promises. We also have to realize those promises are good and bad, right? He promises that those who accept his son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior shall have eternity with him. But he also promises those who reject his son will be rejected on the day of judgment and eternally separated from him in hell. And we don't want that for anyone. So as we go forward, let's just remember, God's going to do what he said he's going to do. And there's nothing going to keep him from doing it. No person, no thing, no nothing will stand in the way of him fulfilling his word. On a daily basis, we believe that a disciple of Jesus Christ will do four things. We want you to seek to encounter God. We want you to exalt him, give him praise and glory for what he has done. We want you to edify yourself by reading the word of God. Pick up the Bible, read it every day, discuss it with others, put it in here. Uh, or so in here so it comes out of here right we want the word of god coming out of your mouth sharing it with others and the last thing we want you to do engage this world for jesus christ tell the world just how awesome jesus is until next time god bless